Welcome to the Confidence in You podcast, designed to help you build confidence and create positive, lasting change in your life. And here's your host, Helen Luxford. Hi, and welcome back to the podcast where we dive deep into the journey of self-discovery, exploring personal growth and connecting in with your confidence. And thanks for being here. This is episode four of six of the Empowerment Essentials, a series focusing on self-discovery. And today we're going to look at time management and prioritizing. We're tackling a topic that many of us struggle with, which is time management and working out what is a priority because we have lots of balls that we're juggling in the air and everything is a priority. And in our busy lives, it often feels like there's never enough hours in the day. We juggle work, family, personal commitments, often leaving little time for ourselves. And today, we will explore strategies to manage your time a little bit more effectively and help you prioritise what truly matters so you can create space for the things that bring you joy and fulfillment. Make sure you stay till the end to get all of the hints and tips. So how about we get started? Time is our most precious resource, yet it is one we often feel we have the least control over. Effective time management and prioritization are crucial because they allow us to align our daily activities with our long-term goals and our values. When we manage our time well, we're less stressed, we're more productive, and we're more present in our lives for ourselves and for those around us. When we're present, we can focus on what truly matters rather than getting caught up in the busyness that doesn't serve us. And prioritisation is about helping us make conscious choices. It's about deciding what's important and dedicating your time and energy to those things. It's really not about doing more. It's about doing what matters most to you. So let's acknowledge some common time management challenges that a lot of us face. Let's see how many of these you can relate to. One, overcommitting. I've been there and many, many people I know have as well. Saying yes to too many things, leaving us feeling stretched or overwhelmed And just like, oh, why did I say yes to that? Number two, procrastination. Putting off important tasks until the last minute and then we have to get them done because we have to get them done because it's the deadline and this leads to stress and rushed work and then we can sometimes feel a little bit, "Mm, didn't give our best for that one. Number three, lack of focus. Constant distractions. I have been guilty of this one myself. Constant distractions from emails, um, things that are happening around you, social media, or, and this was me, multitasking. I can do it all and I can do it all at once. And guess what? No, you can't. Well, you might be able to do some of it, but not all of it. And what you do do, you won't be giving your full attention to because you've divided your attention across lots of things. Number four, perfectionism. Yep. I've been guilty of most of these and this is another one. Spending too much time on tasks, trying to make them perfect, which can be paralyzing and very time consuming. Really, if every box on an org chart isn't the same size, does it really matter? Not really in the big scheme of things. And we can get caught up in wanting all the colors to be exactly the same or whatever it might be. Perfectionism is something that can really, really get under our skin and it's hard to break sometimes. Number five, not setting boundaries. Yep, another one I've been there too. Allowing others to dictate our schedules and priorities and take us away from the things that we'd rather be doing. Now, they don't directly do that. They don't stand over us and tell us to do that, but we probably have fallen in. I know I did, fell into the trap of people-pleasing or being the fixer and always wanting to, yes, yes, of course I can help you, but at what cost? And it took me a long time to realise that it was at the cost of me not being able to do the things that I wanted to do. Now these challenges are more, um, are just examples of 
things that can take us away from the things that we really want to focus on. And these challenges can leave us feeling like we're constantly running on a hamster wheel, never making real progress towards our goals because as soon as we feel like we're getting ahead, we're getting ahead, someone else throws something at us and we grab it and we run with that one and then our stuff falls off and then we have to go back and get our stuff and you know what I'm saying? So let's explore some practical strategies to help you manage your time more effectively and prioritise what truly matters to and for you. Start by identifying your priorities. What are they? What are your top priorities? Have you ever done this? Or are you just too busy and swept up in all the things you need to do every day? And that's okay if you are, because this is just an awareness thing that we're talking about. So take a moment now and think about what are the most important areas of your life right now? It might be creating time and space for yourself. It could be family, it might be career, it could be health or personal growth or a number of things. But what is it for you? Knowing your priorities helps you make decisions about where to focus your time and energy. That's number one. Number two, once you know what your priorities are, set clear goals. Break them down. Now you can use whatever methodology you want. Smart is one. Whoop is one. There's lots of different goal setting methodologies out there. So if you're going to use smart, make it specific, measurable, achievable, results oriented and timed. And if you're going to use whoop, you might not have heard of whoop before. W-O-O-P. Whoop is a great one for big picture dreaming and just thinking about stuff that you might not have thought about before. So W stands for wish. Identify a meaningful goal or wish that you want to achieve. Now this can be anything. It doesn't have to be what society expects or what you think other people expect. It is something for you. Identify a meaningful goal or wish that you want to achieve. This should be something that excites you and aligns with your values. So it could be I've always loved cooking and I want to go and do a cooking course or uh, I don't know it could be anything whatever aligns for you but it's your wish so the W is wish a meaningful goal that you wish to achieve O the first O is outcome think about and visualize if you can visualize if you can't visualize write down what is the best possible outcome of you achieving your wish write it down draw a picture Visualize it, whatever works for you, but what will it feel like? Imagine what it will feel like when you achieve that wish. What will be different? What benefits will you experience? What is it about that wish that will give you something different? And this step helps you connect emotionally with your goal, increasing your motivation. Because if you have an emotional connection to something, you're more likely to want to do it and want to achieve it. So create that outcome. What does it look like for you? What does it feel like for you? What will you be hearing or seeing or doing differently? And the second O is obstacle. And this is why I like the WHOOP framework, because we look at the obstacle. In any adventure in life, in any pursuit in life, there's going to be something that gets in our way. So let's look at what obstacles might get in the way for you achieving your wish and your goal. Often it can be internal obstacles as well as external, but often it can be internal. So what is it that internally might get in the way? Recognise the internal obstacles or struggles that you might have that might prevent you from achieving your wish. Now, this could be lack of self-confidence, it could be a fear, it could be habits that you're finding really hard to break, you want to do something new but the old habits keep drawing you back, it could be self-doubt, it could be any, any number of things but sit with them, feel them, acknowledge them because this obstacle, this second over obstacle is all about acknowledging these challenges because that is crucial for you preparing to overcome them. Once you know about it, you can do something to work around it, overcome it, work through it. For example, it might be that you often feel too tired 
to do the extra thing that you want to do to help you get to your goal. So how can you work around that? How can you either do it earlier in the day or lift your energy levels or what is it that you need to do to overcome that obstacle to help you then be able to work towards achieving your wish and your goal? Because once you have a wish, you want you know the outcome you want to achieve and you've identified the obstacles, then you can create a plan. And that's the P in WHOOP. The W is wish, the first O is outcome, the second O is obstacles, and the P is plan. So create a specific plan to address the obstacles you've identified. And think of it from um, an if-then kind of way. So if-then statements that will help you outline how you can respond to the challenges. So, for example, if I feel too tired after work, then, then what will you do? Because you know if you feel too tired, that's the obstacle you've identified. Now you're planning, then I will, what will you do? I will schedule that earlier in the day. I will delegate something. I will ask for help. What is it that you can do to plan? And I really like the WOOP, the W-O-O-P approach. It's simple. It gives you an easy to understand and apply process and it identifies those obstacles that are going to come up somewhere. It has that emotional connection. You're proactively looking at problem solving before you've hit those barriers or roadblocks and you can be flexible. It can be applied to any goal that you want and more importantly, it can be applied to personal goals, which is what I love. So using the WHOOP framework is great. So you might want to give that a go and see how it works out for you. Okay, so you've set your clear goals, you've broken it down, you've used SMART or you've used WOOP or whatever you've used to identify your goal. So now number three is about creating a daily plan. And what I mean by that is work on this goal each day in keeping it at the forefront of your mind. So each evening take a few minutes to plan the next day. So your whole day, but in planning that whole day, what are you going to do to build in a little bit of time to help you take one more step closer to achieving your wish or your goal? And I encourage you to think about doing this as a habit stack. So James Clear references habit stacks in his book, Atomic Habits. And what a habit stack is, is when you want to create a new habit or a new uh, focus on something, you build it into your current routine but you attach it to something. So you stack it onto something that you already do every day. And it could be brushing your teeth, having a shower, uh, having your coffee, whatever it is for you. So think about it. If you could build this little step each day into your routine, let's just talk about your evening routine. You could either do it just before you brush your teeth, before you go to bed, or you could do it just after you put the kids to bed, or you could do it well, just after you've stacked the dishwasher or whatever a regular evening task is for you, build on it to focus on what your next day looks like so that you can build in a little bit of time to work on your wish or your goal. And just take three to five minutes to list your top three to five tasks that you have to do tomorrow, but one of them will align with your priority for your goal or your wish. And trust me when I say this, Doing this helps you start each day with clarity and focus and it helps you sleep better because you've planned ahead of time. So you don't wake up thinking, oh my God, I've got to do this, I've got to do that. You've spent three to five minutes saying, okay, I've got a lot on tomorrow. These are the three to five things I must get done. And this is one in one of those three to five things, this is the one thing I'm going to do to take one little step towards my wish or my goal. Number four is time blocking. Now, this is a great tip. Allocate specific blocks of time for different tasks or activities. Now, what I mean by this is just becoming a little bit more disciplined in how you spend your time. I used to get very distracted at work because people would say, have you got a moment? And I would say yes. Of course, I would say yes. But if we think of time like money, if you only had X amount of money to spend on something and once it was gone, it was gone, you can't make it again. You're not going to get any more. How would you block out your time? Because each and every day, we all have the same 24 hours in a day. And once it's gone, it's gone. You can't get it back. 
you can't save it till tomorrow and have 36 hours tomorrow. You get 24 hours each and every day. And I used to get sidetracked at work and it was great and I was helping people and I loved it and I enjoyed it, but it meant I wasn't getting my work done. And then I'd rush and then things wouldn't get done the way I wanted them to and then it was this cycle, right? So how are you going to spend your 24 hours each day and using time blocks is a really, really good approach. So one thing that I had as a productivity hack is turning off my email notifications. They used to pop up on the bottom of my screen all the time. Oh, and I'd go and check my emails. So when I turned them off, I would check my emails every two hours, 9 o'clock, 11 o'clock, 1 o'clock, 3 o'clock, 5 o'clock. It's amazing how much more work you get done when you don't have those little emails blocking blocks popping up. So create blocks of time throughout the day where you check your emails um, or where you have your door closed. Sometimes when I was working on a project, I would close my door, but it was rare. Uh, but when I did do that, I did get a lot done. So think about what things can you do? Do you have between 8 and 10 as your productivity hours and you don't have any meetings before 10 o'clock? Um, I don't know what, what works for you, but think about how you can use your time in blocks of time. Number five, learn to say no. This is a biggie. Practice saying no to commitments that don't align with you and your priorities because it's okay to protect your time and energy. And remember, every time you say yes to something, you're saying no to something else. And more often than not, you're saying no to yourself because... Yes, I can help you. Sure, yeah, no worries. Yeah, I've got a moment. Yep, that's okay. But then what are you then having to catch up on later that you're not having that time to do something else? So just think about where when is there times where you can say, look, I'm really sorry, I don't have that I don't have a moment now or no, not yet, or no, not now. So start by by saying no in different ways and build your no muscle, build your ability to say no more, more regularly to the things that you don't want to do or that you don't feel you need to be involved in. Number six, delegate and outsource. Identify tasks that can delegate or outsource, whether that's at work or at home. This will help you free up your time for more important tasks. Think about what can you delegate? about at home do you have to do everything or can you share the chores with others in the house I used to do everything and it's amazing when you ask someone else would you mind you know you put the rubbish out or can you load the dishwasher or can you change the sheets on the bed or can you hang the washing out it's amazing that other people step up and do it and what can you delegate at work the Eisenhower matrix is a great tool to use to help you identify what you can delegate and if you want a free copy of my workbook that I've created around that, just send me a DM or an email or reach out and contact me through my website and I'll be happy to share that free ebook resource with you. Embrace imperfection is number seven. Let go of the perfectionism. Aim for progress, not perfection. Sometimes 80% is good enough. And it's exactly what's needed to move forward. And the pressure you're putting on yourself to be perfect won't make a significant difference to others. Give yourself a challenge to do your best in the time you have and be happy with that and let go of the perfectionism. Because if you can do that, you'll notice how different you feel. And number eight is our last one for today. It's review and reflect. At the end of each week, review what you've accomplished and reflect on what you've worked on. Review what worked really well and what didn't. And it's okay because we learn from those things. We often rush from this week to next and focus on, oh, what we haven't done, I didn't get that done, I didn't get that done, which can make us feel like we're not achieving when in actual fact you've achieved heaps. See, reflection is a really, really good thing because it shows us everything we've done. And I encourage you to do this throughout the year with your career with your career ambitions and just look at where you're at and where you've come from and how far you've gone in that time frame you see 
where you focus is where you will get results. And if you look at what you haven't done, you're focusing on that, you're, real, you're going to be chasing your tail. But if you focus on the achievements you've made, and yeah, there's a couple of things you haven't got to yet, but that's okay, your, your unconscious subconscious mind will then be aligned to, oh yeah, I've done that, I've done that, oh, I can do other things. And this will help you adjust your approach because it'll be like, well, it's okay, I'll get to those other things, I can do this now. And you're rewarding and reflecting and reviewing and acknowledging the moves that you've made. So effective time management and prioritisation are essential for creating a life that aligns with your values and gives you time to focus on brings you joy. And by consciously choosing how you spend your time, you can reduce stress, increase productivity and make room for what matters for you. So this week I challenge you to implement one of the things we've discussed. And as I say often, start small. Perhaps by identifying your top priorities or creating a daily plan or just turning off your email notifications to stop them distracting you. Do something little and notice what a difference it makes. Notice how these changes impact your sense of control and fulfilment. And remember, you have the power to shape your days and ultimately your life. Until next time, keep reclaiming your radiance and living with intention. I often run free masterclasses, so keep an eye on my socials and website for upcoming events or DM me to find out more. Join me next week where we will dive into setting healthy boundaries. And if you'd like some help booking a free 30-minute consult on my website, the link is below in the show notes. And I'd love for you to share this episode with family and friends so together we can raise our confidence. Thanks for being here. And until next time, remember to let your light shine.